When I got done with the 40 day fast, the weight loss was pretty dramatic. It, it felt like a good sense of accomplishment. But what really I found out was I was addicted to sugar and I realized that all the addictions were gone. And so it kind of reset everything. Pastor Shane Eidelman is the fasting expert and author who helps people break free from addictions and reclaim control over their health. In this interview, Shane shares his experience with doing a 40-day fast, how you should start with fasting to make it easier and more effective, and how to break sugar and food addictions so they never return. One of the many reasons I first fell in love with fasting, I came out of drug addiction. I quickly realized that I was transferring addiction to food. But when I started fasting, it taught me that I could exercise self-discipline. I, th I think you just convicted 90% of your audience. You know a lot about fasting, but before we dive into some of those specifics, how exactly did you get into fasting in the first place? A, a long story <laughs> short is um, in my 20s, I was running from God. Uh, you know, I had just chasing the world, everything about the world, and obviously that leaves you empty and void. And in the, I was in the fitness industry. I was a district manager for 24-hour fitness. So I oversaw training departments, all kinds of things. And fasting was not on our radar, you know, because, uh, you know, you want to keep your metabolic rate up, eating every three hours or so, not to mention you want to retain lean tissue because it's so hard to work for your muscle mass. You don't want to lose it. And fasting, you know, depending on how long and what type, uh, and if you're protecting it with, with aminos, branch chain aminos, you, your, your body is going to break down a little bit of, of muscle as fuel as it's regulating. But at some point, it just jumps into ketosis, full-blown fat loss uh, with maybe a little bit of muscle. So that's why I never even thought about it. Uh, it was, to me, uh, nothing I want to do. And so when I came back to the Lord, I just repented of my lifestyle and, and just this complete change came over me. And I started to read the Bible again and I came across it a lot, you know, and I don't know how many of your listeners are familiar with Bible characters in the Bible, but, you know, Esther fasted and then Nehemiah fasted for direction. Uh, Ezra fasted for protection. David fasted. Uh, Elijah fasted. Uh, Moses fasted. Uh, it said Paul was in much fasting. Jesus said, when uh, I'm gone, you, my disciples, will fast. Uh, he said, when you fast, not if you fast. So it's just all over the Bible. And then, you know, kind of convicted uh, because I, giving up that old, old way of thinking is hard. And, uh, just, and then begin to study a lot about fasting. And what I did is I saw the spiritual benefits, of course, are first and foremost. But the spiritual benefits and the physical benefits that's paralleled. Like when you're doing something good spiritually, you're also doing good something physically. And so that's when I wrote the couple books on fasting, the more I would dig into, you know, and I love just, I don't know why, because God gives us passions for certain areas, because those are usually the areas you're going to help people in. So just, I mean, when I, when I heard about autophagy, or uh, cellular breakdown, cellular repair, uh, increasing telomere links on the end of your DNA, and uh, brain-derived neurotropic factors. And I mean, it's like, whoa, just my heart exploded with all this good information and to show people how physical benefits also parallel with spiritual benefits, if that makes sense. That's kind of the short version. Yeah, I love that. That's It's so similar. When I yes. came out of addiction and I first became a believer, it was when I was reading the New Testament, same thing. I kept coming across mm -hmm. these passages that Jesus was saying, when you fast. And I was like, wait a minute, he's not saying when you used to fast, it's when you fast. And I had right. never done it before because very much like you, correct me if I'm wrong, I was trained also by NASM. And so National it's all Academy about- Sports Medicine, yeah. Exactly. And everything that I was taught was all about balancing calories. Like you said, eating small portions every several hours to keep your metabolism high. And so the thought of fasting was like, well, this will just destroy me, right? This will destroy yeah. my metabolism. But same thing, once I started experimenting with it, that's when God really just opened my mind to not just the physical benefits, right? But the spiritual as well. What's so important for us is you have to look at uh, your body as design creation, not ev not evolution, not theory, not conjecture. And a lot of these organizations, you know, love, a lot of these doctors I love to follow, you know, some of them I know and, and some of the experts in fasting, but they'll talk about, they, they get God out of the equation. But that, if you bring him in, you can see how creation, like fat is reserved energy. 
that's how God created us. Well, yeah, and I, I think too of just how awesome God created our bodies that just recently, you know, in the last several years, we've been learning more about autophagy and how God has created our bodies to heal themselves if we just allow it to do so. Yeah, well, autophagy is the, the, the doctor won a Nobel Prize, I think, just six, seven years ago. And just a brief uh, mention of that for those who, who don't know, maybe they do know if they follow your channel a lot, but uh, it's where the body actually goes into cleaning mode. Uh, and the word autophagy, I believe it's a Greek or Latin word that means self-consuming. So the body will actually, when it's lacking energy, not only does it burn fat tissue, but it will go into the actual cells and begin to clean everything from the mitochondria to the, you know, the, the, the uh, cellular waste and things like that. Or even consume apoptosis is when the cell uh, commits suicide, uh, those dead and decaying cells. So the body... If you don't fast, I mean, our body needs to be in seasons of, of feasting and fasting because if we're not fasting, you lose that cleansing mechanism as well. And so autophagy is just, to me, it screams designer. Yeah. So speaking of autophagy then, and we were also talking about, you know, in the New Testament, Jesus talking about when you fast, Jesus did a 40-day fast and you did a 40-day fast. That's actually one of the first videos I right. watched of yours. You have a documentary on it, and I'll link it up in the, in the description of this video. But I am super interested to hear what your 40-day fasting experience was like. I mean, I didn't set out to do it um, right off the bat. God was, it was working in my heart for quite a while, I'd say a few years. And of course, because of fear and, uh, you know, you will lose a significant amount of possibly some muscle mass. And I don't know if 40 days is the standard by which all of us need to fast. You know, it's, it's usually <laughs> right. if, you do, if, you, if you study Jewish history, they would fast on Wednesdays or Fridays or at certain hours or certain festivals or maybe a three day. But, you know, you don't really, there's no proof text for going 40 days. But God has put it on my heart and the heart of many other people as well to to just take that season and there's something significant about 40 days i don't know if you've ever studied that number in the bible but there's a lot of mention even back in genesis and the flood goliath and david and um just the fasting aspect of course and and uh, so many different things so amazon prime actually picked it up as a documentary on amazon prime as well so yes. i said okay lord i'm going to step out and do this um and my goal was um, water only was my goal, but I ended up, you know, taking in some grapefruit juice because I had to preach three times on Easter Sunday. And I don't know if any, anybody realized that's just really exhausting to speak for an hour each time and then praying with people. And, you know, you can't be like, oh, I need to sit down. I need to lay down. I'm not. So I would have a little bit of, of juice or nutrients. I remember one time it was like, I'm just day six or seven. And I've got, you know, we were having services every night that week. Uh, and I just grabbed a handful of cashew nuts. I'm not going to get legalistic about it. It got me enough energy to get through that, that service, that, that night of, of church services. And so it was, it was incredible. I mean, some mornings you'd wake up and once hunger is gone, that's when it's kind of exciting because, you know, ghrelin is a hunger hormone. It will eventually peter out. It will, it will tire out and there's no more hunger because now your body is also switched over and it's burning your your fat as fuel that's where ketones come in a keto, ketogenic diet and things like that but i still you know ups and downs mood swings uh remember my daughter's birthday party there's donuts everywhere some days were incredible i get up and begin worshiping and i wrote a couple articles just like within 30 minutes but then there's other days where it was very challenging very difficult i'm like is this even worth it lord i don't know if i was really hearing from you and that's why faith, you know, has to play an important role in this and just uh, moving forward. So that, that's kind of why I did it. it. took a couple of years to prepare, get my heart right. And then the more I began to study on it, you probably follow, you know, there's, there's fasting clinics that take people through 40-day uh, fasts, um, but they usually recommend in a clinic to do that. And I would, I would even obviously want a disclaimer here that, you, you know, you want to talk to your doctor and make sure if you're on medication um, there, there's something about being somewhere with somebody's supervision because for most people, water fasting is just really, it's when the body needs a reset to just completely rest. And it's hard to, to do, do when you're busy. I've got five kids at home. Um, and so I had to keep that in consideration too. So you mentioned the ups and downs. So I was going to ask you, you know, was it this 
wonderful experience where once the hunger disappeared, everything was fine and you just coasted through. But if the hunger was gone, well, yeah, right. What do you think yeah. the ups and downs were? Was it more of the, the psychological, the mental head game? Your hunger d diminishes, you know, because you're not, you're not necessarily hungry because hunger is a sign that your body needs nutrients and your body begins to pull from fat. So you're really not hungry. However, when we give up our favorite addictions, there is the lust of the flesh. So my flesh still craved uh, food. Uh, and boy, that looks good. That smell, when I walk into the house and they're cooking, you know, grass-fed beef tacos, it's like, okay, I'm taking a drive. Um, so those things reignite <laughs> that hunger. So although hunger is gone, it doesn't mean, you know, you don't still struggle with things. Or, um, yeah, the mood swings uh, were, were pretty intense. Like everything um, and within... In the morning, I, 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 this is going to be an incredible day. And then within three hours, I'm angry, I'm upset, I'm irritated, I can't eat. So you have to process those emotions. Um, and there's something about eating that, you know, they're finding that serotonin and a lot of things happen in our gut bacteria or microbiome. That's why I think emotions are um, all over the place because there is, the, the stomach is called the second brain. There's a lot of studying coming out on microbiome, this whole community that can really, really affect how we feel our mood swings. I can, I've helped so many people off, get off of medication and depression, fear, anxiety by cleaning up their diet and their lifestyle. It's all connected uh, for sure. One of the reasons, one of the many reasons I first fell in love with fasting, like I mentioned, I came out of drug addiction, I got saved. Mm -hmm. And so I was learning how to live my life without using substances. I quickly realized that I was transferring addiction to food. But when I started fasting, yeah. because it is challenging at times, right? Like, yes, the physiological hunger can disappear and dissipate over time, but it's still really challenging. And what I found so valuable from those challenges is that it taught me that I could exercise self-discipline. Right. Would you agree with that? It is definitely about self-discipline. Not only do you need self-discipline to fast, it, it actually helps you with self-discipline. Uh, when you fast. And that's why you mentioned when you came off of, of addiction, um, you, you turn to food like many, many of us do. The reason is addiction at the core is a stronghold. There's a stronghold on your life. And that's why you'll see if you go to, you know, a lot of AA meetings, what are they doing instead? You know, pot of coffee, pot of coffee, yeah, pot of coffee. That was me for three years. <laughs> they give, yeah, they gave up that addiction for this addiction. And so when we get, and then food is addictive because there's a lot of chemicals released in the body that do make us feel better. And that's why a lot of people, and I've struggled with being overweight, you know, a lot of my life, I've had to fight against it. And I'd still, if I were to just not care, I would probably uh, shoot up there pretty good. And because, you know, yeah. eating makes me feel better. There is a, a, a natural aspect to, to feeling better for many of us because of food. And, and that's why we have to be so careful because in the food industry, they actually have scientists working for their companies that will put chemicals in, you know, 40 different chemicals in certain burgers. And these things, the salt and the chemicals, they actually are very addictive. And that's why you eat too, if you, it's very hard to eat a huge salad, too much of a big salad, put tomatoes and cucumbers and celery and big greens and some chicken breast. You're not, you're going to be pretty full and pretty satisfied at five, 600 calories, 700 calories with some avocado, but you get 1500 calories of Chinese food and you can't stop eating it because there's a lot of addiction that's working there as well. Yeah. So let's, you know, uncover that a little bit more. If somebody's new to fasting or they haven't done fasting for a while, and especially if their nutrition and their diet isn't great, they've got, right. if we're calling them addictions, they've got cravings for sugar, for processed carbohydrates, for those addictive junk foods. You wouldn't tell them to just be like, okay, go do a 40 no. day fast now and everything's going to be okay. Like how should they start? Yeah. I've only met maybe a handful of people uh, who have done a 40 day fast that I know personally, and it has to be really called of God. And I, I actually believe it or not, I've changed how I will answer this question now, because I used to, you know, maybe, I don't know, six, seven years ago, when I first started learning, I would tell people, and I, and I still do, I think it's, it is a good rule to follow is to wean off of these things. So you have to wean yeah. off of your addictions, you know, you wean off of your, I, I switch to, you know, green tea or decaf green tea as you're weaning off coffee, because caffeine just enough, just in and of itself is going to be a nightmare. If you just go cold turkey on coffee, you will quit. Most people will. 
it's very hard because now you've got the central nervous stimulant, your brain chemicals, you've, you're coming off that, now you're coming off a of sugar processed food. So I tell people take a good 10 days, maybe the Daniel fast, you know, or juicing, but go ahead and wean off, get your body prepared and then be ready. Uh, but I have had people come to me and say, Shane, God is just telling me I need to quit all this stuff. I need to stop right, like mm -hmm. today. If you feel led to do that, go ahead and do it. And then I talk to them a week later. They're like, oh, it's incredible. No, no withdrawals, nothing. I'm like, what? How is that possible? I mean, I have hard withdrawals yeah. every time I try fasting uh, from sweets and sugar and caffeine and things in the past. But sometimes people just need to start and uh, God, God will lead them. God will bless that. But what I would do for most people is obviously if you're on medication, let's say you're on high blood pressure medication, you need to talk to your doctor because fasting lowers blood pressure. So now you got a, a you know, problem there. What about statin drugs? Statin drugs uh, inhibit or prohibit the release of cholesterol from the, the liver. And while your liver is going to be doing a lot of different things during fasting, so now you got to talk to your physician, you got to let them know what you're doing. And so for most people who want to fast, God is not looking for perfection, he's looking for direction. I don't know if I've ever fasted perfectly. Like to me, yeah. a perfect fast would be one week of just drinking pure water. No xylitol yeah. in the gum, right? No lemon and lime and got yes. a little calories and nutrients here. Because hardcore fasting advocates, they say, not a drop of any nutrients. But I'm like, well, I need to get through this. Yeah. So I'm going to have a piece of gum if I need to. I'm going to put some lemon. I'm yeah. going to take some sodium and some electrolytes if I need to get through it. So I've, I've, I've had times where I've blown it, but God's not looking at perfection. He doesn't love me more when I fast, but I sure love him more. So it's about just the heart, right? So I encourage people. I started with a 24-hour fast, and it was incredible. I didn't make it. I made it uh, 18 hours and had some orange juice. And I yeah. went to sleep and woke up, and I was so excited the next day because I did it. We, I think we get so tied up into the little details, and God's just saying, hey, I want your heart. I'll walk you through this, yeah. even if you blow it, even if you don't do this perfectly. And so I just encourage people in that area. Also, I didn't fast for years because I thought I had hypoglycemia. Uh, but what really I found out was I was addicted to sugar. So <laughs> I was not fasting because of addiction. And I, you, we have all kinds yeah. of excuses. But if you begin to wean off, like just, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a teaspoon of sugar in most jelly. There's a teaspoon of sugar in most bread. There's a teaspoon of sugar in ketchup and barbecue sauce. And you look at the course of the day, you're having a lot of sugar. So if you can begin, what I do now is just wean off of all of that, just Ezekiel bread, eggs, clean meat, clean dairy, clean fruit, veggies, this God-given food. I'm not as hungry. I don't have addictions for these sweet things. And weight comes off much easier as well. It's the addictions and <clears throat> the unhealthy food that is really why we are overweight and obese. And my concern is our healthcare system cannot uh, maintain this. It, it can't. And yeah. it, it, things aren't slowing down. Childhood obesity is skyrocketing. They estimate that 50% of all Americans will be overweight in 2030. Yeah, it's and insane. And that's what causes a lot of problems. Di type 2 diabetes is diet related. Straight, yeah. straight, straight truth right there. All of the chronic diseases that, especially in the last five to 10 years, have been shown they can be reversed. They don't have to be chronic yes. if you just change the, the fuel that you're putting into your body. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, you, you start at the top of your head. What's the big ones? Alzheimer's, dementia, right? And, and yeah. when you fast, something called brain-derived neurotropic factor is in, released, and it actually will clean and clear the, the sheaths that cover the, the nerves of your brain. And those begin to clear because Alzheimer's and dementia, it is, is things are break, breaking through the blood-brain barrier, and they're, they're, they're attaching to these nerves, the same as multiple sclerosis as well. And so you can see fasting. What about eyesight is improved? What about heart disease? You begin to, uh, the arteries and things, the plaque and things are, are so you, you can just work your way down, uh, lower back pain and shoulder pain. A lot of that is due from inflammation. I mean, you, you can just look at pretty much, as we know, cancer is just, is just cells out of control. We, a lot of times we blame our genetics, but our genes do load the gun, but it's our lifestyle that pulls the trigger. And the big study right yeah. now is on epigenetics and how gene expression. So alcohol, tobacco, eating junk, you can express your genes in such a way that it will lead to disease and early death. Or you can clean up your diet and the genes expressed begin to heal, heal your body. It's, it's very interesting how that works. Yeah, I think I heard Dr. Fung, at least he was one of the people who mentioned it the first time I heard it years ago. A lot of these diseases are diseases of overconsumption. So you mentioned yes. cancer. It's overproduction of 
cells. Whereas when you fast, like you mentioned, apoptosis starts to happen. You can break down those cancer cells. I mean, everybody has cancer cells in their body. It's just when they proliferate to too great of a degree, that's when it becomes what we diagnose as cancer. Right. Absolutely. And I don't know how many of your listeners know, and they can triple check this, but the primary fuel for cancer is glucose, yeah. sugar, sugar, and oxygen. It needs those two things. Yeah. So you begin to withdraw glucose and your body is running on ketones. It's, it's very, very beneficial. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned you thought you had hypoglycemia or maybe you were, you know, borderline hypoglycemic. I had the same exact experience. I, look, I remember the very first day I went into that long-term treatment program, right? Like three days yeah. withdrawing from opiates. And there was this sheet cake laid out on the table. And I, I wasn't checked in yet. So I was just like left to my own devices. And I remember oh, yeah. eating all of this cake. And three hours later, I was starving again. And I would get really cold. I'd get really shaky. And I would yes. tell people that I had hypoglycemia. And looking back on it, I think the same thing was going on with me. I was just so accustomed. My body was so used to eating these poor nutrition, high sugar foods that it would just, I'd spike my blood sugar, it would crash again, and I'd have to refuel it. Yeah, you know, that, that's so important. In hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, of course, once you start to control your diet and when you're not taking in a lot of sugar and, and what I call processed carbs, your blood sugar level can, can maintain a lot easier and, and insulin is maintained. Insulin is a fat storage hormone. Glucagon is the, the opposite. We want more glucagon, less insulin. And so when we're eating all these sugars, you know, you've got insulin going up and down and that's why people become resistant to insulin, insulin resistant. So speaking of addictions and especially sugar addictions, a lot of us do have sugar addictions. It's funny, I'm laughing because you mentioned the number of times you've experienced, you know, kind of withdrawal symptoms from it. I'm the same way. Just as a side note, what's really interesting is the only I've I've started and quit coffee i can't even tell you how many times like i'll, I'll mm. drink it because i enjoy it and then i'll get to the point where like no i want to prove to myself that i can stop it again so i stop it the only time i didn't have withdrawals from caffeine bizarrely was when i did a carnivore diet i did a oh, carnivore right. diet for 30 days and i didn't get any headaches it, it actually it blew my mind because usually i'll get some some headaches but say somebody's getting into fasting they recognize that it's going to be much more difficult because of some of the foods that they're eating. What would you say would be the best first steps to take for them? I would set up a date like, okay, in 30 days, I can take, you know, a couple of days off of work. I can schedule my vacation. Listen, your health is, is worth it. This is so important. I would take that over vacation any day. Um, and so I'd say, okay, here's, here's my goal. I want to, I want to fast. Here's the type of fast I want to do. But I need to get my body ready. Key things that I would do is um, what what are you consuming that you need to stop? Okay, so if it's if, let's say it's coffee and, and let's go let's go worst case scenario, right? A coffee and a donut in the morning. Okay, yeah. well, how about organic coffee and organic decaf coffee and do half and half, and then yeah. next day half and half. Next day. And so after the course of a week, week and a half, you're down to almost no co coffee. Make sure it's organic because they spray directly the leaves with pesticides, fungicides, fungicides, and glyphosate and things like that, if possible. What I would do instead of this, um, I make French toast, believe it or not. And all it is is Ezekiel bread with two eggs, you know, really healthy. And then I just use some fresh blueberries and crush the blueberries on it. But that is, it takes away the sweet desire a million times more healthier than the donut. So you start to make these changes and then maybe green tea instead of the, the, the decaf coffee, you know, a, a couple bags of green tea, not too much caffeine. And then maybe now, you know, I'm going to just have a little bit of water in the morning. I'm just going to pray and I'm going to, I'm going to try to miss that first meal. But also throughout the day, you know, you're having big salad, lean, lean chicken. I'm going to cut back on my calories. I don't need to go get that extra and what I do, um, let's say I'm craving that chocolate or that, you know, you get those cravings later. Sometimes I'll have like a, uh, a sparkling water, you know, that, that kind of mm -hmm. just takes that edge off or I'll drink some, some water and just maybe, you know, cut an apple in half with some peanut butter on it. And man, I'm satisfied. So you've got to kind of be strategic. You've got to plan ahead, but it begins with that first meal. 
And then the second meal, and then you're like, oh, I blew it at dinner. Okay, well, get back on track in the morning. And so it's just a constant effort of removing the things that you know you need to uh, remove from your life. In your case, why did you feel the need? Um, what was, were you just convicted about coffee? Yeah, honestly, just because I know my past, right, with addiction yeah. to drugs and then coming into food addiction shortly after that, addiction to nicotine, like you name it, I've, I've tried it, I've done it. Yeah. And so, yeah, anytime that I decide to quit coffee, it's when I get to that almost edge of like, okay, this is starting to control me a little bit more than right. I'm controlling it. So it doesn't happen you that have to often. Have it. It's not like I'm right. It's be, I'm looking forward to this more than I'm looking forward to just being, you know, alive and doing right. something else. That's an overstatement, but I think you understand what I mean. It's like if I'm yeah. really using this as an escape to something, that's when I realize, okay, I need to bring it back under my control. I, I think you just convicted ninety percent of your audience. If you have to have something, you're absolutely right, and that's why. I don't know. A lot of people aren't aware, but caffeine is actually in coffee specifically, and I'll clarify why, why I mean that. It actually is a drug. It is a drug. It's a central nervous stimulant. You know, we have to wonder, for me, it makes me more irritable. It makes me more angry. It makes me more on edge. Uh, and, and those aren't good characteristics to have. So you have 150 milligrams in a cup of coffee. You take a cup of green tea that has maybe 30 milligrams, but also with the green tea, there's something called L-theanine. It's an amino acid that brings a calming effect. So I feel nothing with green tea like I do with coffee. Not only that, I'm the same way. I have to have my coffee. I don't have to have my green tea. It's like, I, I, I don't want that. I want yeah. coffee. And so you can tell where your addiction is pulling you. You, you can tell, hey, this, this is a problem. I need, to, uh, I need to really get this in check. And again, wean off unless God's calling you to do something drastic. And you're going to feel, feel a lot better. I personally believe coffee in certain amounts can increase your uh, blood sugar levels and give that craving for sweets, especially in high dosages. Most people are having a lot more than they think. And if you get over three, 400 milligrams, you know, you're, you're risking a very good chance of becoming uh, overly anxious. And yeah. I would say, as God, as God is my witness, you know, 90% of the people I've helped with anxiety and fear and even depression, once they got off caffeine, they 90% felt 100 times better. So we can pray yeah. for healing, and I still do, but you have to wonder, am I creating the very thing I'm praying about? You're going to hear studies. Every time I talk about this, people send me, well, what about this study? What about this study? Well, are they funded by Procter & Gamble? Are they funded by Starbucks? Yep. I mean, cardiologists, doctors, uh, and that's one thing I have with some of these fasting experts. Oh, some coffee's fine. That's because they themselves are addicted. So, of course, they're going to say, yep. and technically a black, black cup of coffee is not going to break your fast. However, here's my question. During a fast, your body is it's like heaving a sigh of relief. It's slowing down, Right. So why are you going to give your body and your heart this, this stimulant? It, 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 to me, it seems very counterproductive. This is a time to rest and get my blood pressure down and my heart rate down. Yet I'm going to take something that is a, it's actually a stimulant. It puts my body in a fight or flight mechanism. It runs the same, same biochemical pathways as opiates or in, in, in mentally. And so, you know, I think it is something people have to look at. The problem is most of us, we, we like good news about bad habits. And so yeah. when we hear these articles, oh, look, two cups of coffee is not bad. It's that confirmation bias that we all fall victim to, you know, yeah. a couple of glasses of red wine every night is healthy for you. So now I can start drinking every night. Right. But really, it comes back to what you were talking about is you have to check your heart. You have to check your reasons behind doing something. I've done fast where I've drank coffee. I've done fast in the beginning when I didn't know any better. I was putting you know, right. artificial sweetened Mio in my water because I believed that it helped me get through the fast. But really all it was doing was just giving me something else to distract me from what I right. should have been focusing on, which is learning the discipline. But when it comes to all of the different things that, you know, I've quit, I literally quit probably every substance that people have tried and a lot of the ones that people haven't tried. Um, sugar was yeah. one of the most challenging ones. And I often think that it's because it is so prevalent, right? And it's because it's so accepted. But I wanted to ask you about this to see if you would agree with this. What I found 
is the longer it's just like with my drug addiction the longer i stay away from it the less my body craves it it's almost like god designed our bodies to adapt to whatever we're putting into it have you found this too oh absolutely because i think of the verse often resist the devil and he will flee you know there's no yeah. temptation that's that's overtaking you but what is common to all men and god will will let you be able to bear it so yes the more you say no the easier it does get. And I should let people know, um, I have a book on that, 40 Days to Reset Your Life. And uh, they can download everything for free at our, at our church web website, Westside Christian Fellowship, the fasting books and all the books on addiction are free downloads there. Um, but I forgot to mention, when I got done with the 40-day fast, it, it felt like a good sense of accomplishment. Had I wished I would have did water only, yes, I lost, I think, I, I don't know if I remember in the book, maybe 30, around 38 pounds or so. So the weight loss was pretty dramatic. And I realized that all the addictions were gone. Like I didn't crave sugar. Wow. I didn't crave coffee. I didn't crave, you know, even meat. It was kind of a good reset. I wanted to focus on healthy food again. And so it kind of reset everything. Yeah, I love that. And and thanks for mentioning your books. I am going to link up the direct link. So Shane has all of his books that he's written, which I've read almost all of one of them. I'm almost done with your book called Feasting and Fasting, What Works, wow. What Doesn't, and Why. Yeah, this one I'll put um, the cover up. These two are the yeah. key for those wanting to fast. Yeah, a lot of those questions, those even beginner, even intermediate questions are answered within that book. If you want to get started, make sure you download that. So going back to kind of breaking the sugar addiction, you know, there's all these different hacks and whatnot. What I found is really you just have to kind of make up your mind that you want to break this and then commit to doing it, recognizing that you likely will have stumbles, right? You will mess up at times what matters yep. more than messing up is what you do after you mess up and it does get easier over time do you have yes. anything to add to that well i mean you you hit the nail on the head because the power of the made-up mind is really the key mm -hmm. because if we go into this making some excuses um like i think weaning off sugar is huge but you have to look at your ingredients it's pretty much in everything when i did that before I've, i you get kind of silly like well i just want to have processed sugar but I'll have, you know, <laughs> honey and, and uh, maple syrup. And so I found I was actually having more sugar because I was putting on pancakes and this. And so it's like, okay, Lord, I need to get, I need to wean off sugar and the power of the made up mind. And yeah, like you said, Hey, I grabbed some chocolate. I blew it. I'm getting back on track. It's not the fall that hurts us. It's really staying down. That does. When you look at anybody yeah. who succeeded in fasting, you know, people look at me like, Oh man, he knows a lot. He's done a lot of fat. Yeah, but do you know how many times I've fallen during a fast? And I, ju I just get back yeah. up and say, okay, well, God knows my heart. I'm going to finish strong. I'm not going to get bound again to these addictions. And it's a journey. It's a race. The, the trophy goes to those who get back up. And, and when you look, you look at all these YouTube influencers, right? Or you look, man, I want to get in shape mm -hmm. like that. I want to just make sure, number one, it's for the right reasons. But number two, realize those people don't eat perfectly all the time. They don't walk on clouds and, and do everything just right. It, within their, their lifestyle, there are some wrong choices. But if you get back up and you make 80%, 85%, 90% of your choices, the right choices, you will, re, you, you will get to your destination. The problem is many of us, we know we fall, forget it, it's not worth it, and then we just go back into our old lifestyle. That's usually what happens. It's not the fall that hurts. It's staying down in addiction. I, I help a lot of people with addiction too. And this is a cycle. I blew it. Now I'm in shame and guilt. Forget it. I'm depressed. Let me go back to the addiction. Now I'm shame yeah. and guilt. Woe is me. Let me go back to the addiction. And we stay down there. Even people I've, I've, I've helped went back to alcohol after five, six, seven years. I mean, that's pretty dis depressing. And so I say, yeah, yeah. you fell. Okay. What are you going to do with tomorrow? Let's get back up. You learn from it. Let that be a stepping stone, not a stumbling block. And so yeah. you, that goes with fasting and eating healthy. You, you just get back up. That's why they call it a lifestyle. That's why diets don't work. You can't go on a 30-day diet and expect lifetime results. You can't go on a 40-day fast and expect – actually, what's more important than fasting is what you do after the fast. And uh, so it's well, yeah. lifestyle changes and just going in the right direction despite setbacks – and obstacles. If I were to relapse tomorrow, right? I've got I've now got 
a choice to make. I can either go right. full blown back into drug addiction, you know, like I was seven years ago, or I can recognize that the past seven years aren't a waste of time because I just made a no. mistake. How much right. I learned about myself and how to stay away from that addiction in the last seven right. years, like that's still there. Right. And I don't want to give anybody, I'm not giving anybody an excuse to cave in. Right. Oh, Shane said if I blew it, I'm no, you, you don't want to blow it. But I want to give grace for the journey, if that makes sense. You know, hey, get back up and keep fighting, but don't fall. Don't don't use it as an excuse because there's no guarantee you'll get back up. Uh, but if you do, yeah. there's still hope in Christ and turning back to him and getting back on that narrow path. There's grace if you do misstep or fall or fail. Right. As long as you learn from that failure. But what we're saying is it's much easier if you don't. <laughs> it's much right. easier yeah. if you just stay the course and don't and don't yes. have the the misstep. But, you know, we're human. And it's funny you mentioned um, the games that we tend to play in our own heads. Like with the you said, well, I'm just going to cut out processed sugar. The, the thought that came to mind because I did that too, right? There was a period of time where I was legitimately this is going to sound silly, but it's true. This is my story. I felt like I was addicted to oatmeal with stevia or honey mm -hmm. in it because it was sweet mm -hmm. and I wasn't eating any sugar, but that's what I looked yep. forward to. It also reminds me of when, how many times I tried to quit chewing tobacco, right? So first I would switch yeah. to cigarettes to get off of chewing tobacco. And then I was like, well, this is gross. I'm going to switch to nicotine lozenges and nicotine gum. And Shane, literally for like two years of my life, I was chewing tobacco, smoking cigarettes, and using nicotine gum and lozenges. <laughs> All I did was just yeah. add more fire to it. Yeah, it's hard. Excuses keep us bound. And that's a good point. I mean, I would encourage stevia, you know, of course, people. But what happens is, although something like stevia is no calorie, the chemical, the, the, the signal, and the taste, that's what... Yeah we can we can begin to to crave as well and that's why i think even with coffee with no calories black coffee why do why do i crave it it's because of what it does chemically to my body yeah and so th that's something yeah. good to be aware of as well so shane when it comes to the food that you eat and you just mentioned it so i'm going to put it out there too just so everybody's clear on it shane and i were very health conscious but I'm guessing you're like me. We don't eat perfectly all of the time, but right. we do strive to do as best as we can. But how do you view the food that you put into your own body? And also what is perfect, you know, based on, you know, the raw vegan crowd, the carnivore crowd, yeah. the plant-based, whole plant-based food only. And there's so many different diets out there. I'm, I'm actually, if, if people follow my YouTube channel, we're going to post it next week. I'm, I'm going to interview one of the one of the smartest doctors that I know on holistic medicine and how the body works. It's going to be a long interview. We're going to unpack this for a little bit. We're going to look at studies and different things. So in order to keep my sanity, I have to look at the Bible. And it's pretty clear that the main source of energy of food that God gave us was whole plant-based foods. That's how we were created. You look at the enzymes, the phytochemicals, the lectin, and it, you can just go on. But then we also see that God gives permission. He says, okay, now, for example, uh, Noah, now I give you, as I gave you the fruits and the vegetables, now I give you the meat as well. And so we see Jesus eating fish. We see, no doubt, they ate lamb on Passover. We see John the Baptist was, what was he eating? Locusts and wild honey. Locusts is 40, 50, 60% protein. It's actually a very healthy food, although I haven't tried it yet. Uh, it's probably really good honey, right? And see, sugar and honey, those things aren't bad at all, but they're walking 15 miles a day. The, see, that's right. the thing with carbohydrates and sugar people don't understand. It's Sugar is in the blueberries, the fruit, the, pe the, the fructose, the honey. It's all really good and God-given. But that energy, that glucose is, I, I, hey, I got uh, to walk six miles. You know, I got to go to here. And so it, it fuels the body. It, it, but if you're just sitting on the couch and that energy can't be used and we're consuming too much, that's why we're getting into the, a lot of the problems. That's why my goal now is 10,000 steps. It's a lot harder than you think, you know, in our culture today. Yeah. And so I look at the Bible. What does the Bible say? Whole plant-based food is primary. I need to have big salads, tons of nutrients, uh, but I also avoid seed oils. There's a lot of research on seed oil, sunflower, safflower oil, corn oil, canola oil. 
and what they do with linoleic acid and how they're processed, the solvents, and the, it's just not good. I, so I just avocado and uh, just uh, cold pressed uh, olive oil and things like that. And then some meat, I'll try to eat some clean meat as well. Do I always do that? No, you know, sometimes it's, you know, friends brought something over and I'm not going to get picky about Those it. Church and then we also see you. that they made, yeah, in the Bible, they had, uh, they had pretty clear, they had some yogurt and, and goat's milk or cow. I mean, raw is obviously best. The pasteurization process kills everything that's pretty benef- pretty much beneficial. But how do you get raw milk these days? And how, you know, it's, it's tough for 99% of us. Um, so that would yeah. be my main diet, you know, some good raw cheese, uh, some clean meat, uh, a lot of veggies. Uh, but then there are times like right now, I'm in a season where God's kind of convicting me. I'm 6'2", 220. And I should actually weigh about 190 is if I want to be, you know, flexible and, and, and more energy, more energy for my kids. And, and so I, I'm, I got to lose some weight. And so that is when I am going to cut out a lot of uh, things and eat, eat more protein, uh, more, more beef, some beef jerky, some chicken, lower calorie uh, diet as well. Uh, there is something like Jason Fung you mentioned, and I love his work, but there, I don't agree with some of the things because calories do matter. If you, if you eat too much energy, you're going to store it. There's just no way around it. Now, hormones play a role, the type of food, activity, but the bottom line is if you're consuming more energy than your body is burning, you will. Yeah. Uh, gain that weight. Uh, you will put on the weight because that's the whole weight loss. The weight gain process is because I have too much that I took in. I've got to store it for later. And then of course, activity, try to be active, park farther away, walk around the mall, get active with, and you have to really be vigilant about you know how you spend your time in this day and age. Everything is convenient now. So convenient. We, we can put a thing on the ground and it vacuums for us. Have you seen those yeah. those <laughs> yeah. vacuums that just go around and they bump things and they'll go and and they'll just vacuum your house or clean your floor. You don't have to do anything and and just the TV and the internet. It's it's really those things work against us. So we have to be strategic and motivated. Hope that helps. But that that's what I would do. I think one of the biggest things we have to fight against, and that's why fasting is such a very good tool it's intentional it fights against the comfort and the convenience yes. of everything that we have available to us which i'm not saying it's a bad thing right like it's helped us no. evolve but we have to take a step back and be like what's it actually what are the problems everything comes with pros and cons right and there's a lot of cons right. to the convenient world we live in today yeah i think the term for that uh probably won't we'll say it like hormesis or something like that where what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And you see all yeah. the things now, the, the fitness craze, you know, Dr. Huberman or Gary Brecka, Ben Greenfield, Peter Atia, you know, it's all, you know, cold baths and, and the ice man. I remember his name uh, that in a different country, he like goes and sits in ice for a half hour. Some stress is actually good. That's how muscle grows. Fasting actually stresses out the body, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. It, it puts the body in a, in a more stressed state. So now certain things are engaged and certain things respond and uh, it, it begins to now heal the body. So, yeah, I think getting out of that comfort is, is good when you need it. But the majority yeah. of us are too comfortable. And that's really where yeah. the problem comes in. And to me, being prepared, so out of sight, out of mind, we don't have a lot of junk food in our house because we'll just grab it. And then I usually have like the, the French toast I talked about with the Ezekiel bread and eggs. I'll make three or four days worth and I'll just put it in the refrigerator. So you just pop it in the toaster uh, or and then a salad. You can already have salads made in mason jars. So you just pour it out, pour some chicken, get some primal kitchen salad dressing and you're good to go. So it's actually yeah. fast food is not that fast. By the time you have to drive and get it, what it does to your body, the effects of being prepared far outweigh the benefits, so-called benefits of fast food. It ain't fast and it certainly ain't cheap anymore either. No, but, not anymore. Yeah, just those, those, those basic common sense things that seem so simple that we don't want to do them because if they're that simple, they can't possibly work. Like right. I tell people all the time because I actually do this myself. If I don't want to be eating a specific food or a group of foods for a time being, I don't keep it in the house. Like you could ask oh, you my can. wife. It's no. ridiculous how, how this works. Like if I have a carton of ice cream in the freezer – guaranteed 
I will be waking up at 2 or 3 a.m. every morning, going and eating some ice cream and then going back to bed. It's terrible, but that's just, I can't not think about it. And not everyone relates to that because if those of us with an addictive back tendency, like my wife can have that ice cream in there a week, but not me, you know, it's gone. And so we have to be strategic and not, to me, it's out of sight, out of mind. I don't want temptation, you know, sitting there in my house. It's hard enough as it is. Well, yeah, it's like I just I just had two surgeries two months ago, and I had to take pain medication following those. Yeah. But after the pain went away after two days, I immediately got rid of the rest of the pills because why would I leave those around yeah. in my house? Not that I'm afraid that I'll you know slip back into drug addiction, but why tempt yourself? You know, if you know right. if you know yourself, you know your struggles, make it easier for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, because you could say, you know what, I I don't feel great today. My back kind of hurts. Well, I have those. Let me go grab one. Most of the opiate crisis that we have in our nation right now, uh, a good percentage of it is those people started uh, on pain meds to manage their pain. That's how I started. From surgery recovery. That's And then once you start, it's the same kind of biochemical pathway in the brain. It's not, you're fortunate to do that. But if you go past a couple weeks, the body really gets, you know, hooked on it. So Shane, we mentioned uh, your website. We will put that in the description. People can download any or all of your books for free. But if somebody wants to learn more about you, get in touch with you, I'll also link up your YouTube channel because you've got, like I said, I've been watching tons of your videos. Where else would you send somebody to learn more about you? Well, westsidechristianfellowship.org is where all the books are at for free downloads. But then my website, shaneidleman.com, is where they can find you know all the other things, articles, and like you mentioned, YouTube, Rumble, uh, X, Threads, Instagram, and Facebook. So they can follow us. And I try to release you know three, four, five things a week, um, yeah. just on health and fitness, bib- biblical lifestyle. Because to me, it's all it's a lot of it's connected. If I'm feeling it good is. spiritually and I'm disciplining the body, and if it feels good spiritually and physically, but you know, yeah. let's say I, we we just cave into King's stomach. And now I'm being, I'm eating too much. I'm a gluttony is ruling my life this week. And, and when you open that door, then other addictions come in. And then now you don't want to read the word because everything's interwoven, body, soul, and spirit. So it's just so important. So I hit on all different types of, of topics on those, on those platforms. I'm hoping it helps a lot of people. They just, a lot of people right now need encouragement. They need to know, oh, he struggles too. Oh, he's been through that too. And I can get back up. I just intermittent fasting, eating healthy, God given food in moderation, and you move more. And you know, you, you do that. That that's pretty much the the secret to uh getting in shape. Yeah, ain't that the truth? We've known the secret for how many hundreds of years. We just want yeah. a different secret. <laughs> exactly. Yes, sir. Well, Shane, thanks again so much. This has been a blast.